closer to the building, it was almost like nighttime. What was left of the building was a fiery hulk. The firefighters thought it might collapse. Pieces of the building kept falling. Rescue workers pushed people away from the scene. We are walking back. There's a building about to blow up. All the flame, debris coming down. Just to rehydrate so they can return to the parched canyon. The building's going to collapse. Nothing information. And it's always dangerous. The building's going to collapse. Nothing information. The building's going to collapse. Nothing information. The building's going to collapse. Nothing information. And then late afternoon, 5 p.m., still another building collapses. 7 World Trade Center, ruined by falling debris from the Twin Towers. That's, uh, Peter, it was uh, an astonishing thing because the, the civilians who were standing around here were all amazed, but things have become so bizarre down here that the hundreds of firemen who were standing around looked at it, felt a bit shocked, but then just said, well, we're going to have even more work to do uh, associate producer Lucy Kerrigan had been over near that building just a little bit earlier, and the policeman had told her that they feared the building was going to come down, that they were evacuating people from around it. Thank you, Bill. Just, we just stay with this photograph for this graphic for just a second. Well, no, there's number seven coming down. When you think that, that, that part of the component of news coverage around the country every year is the excitement and the fun that people get watching an old building being demolished and they wired very carefully for days and it's a very careful operation in order to make sure that the building comes down safely i think the last one we saw was when they brought down one of the old casinos in las vegas i mean this is just stunning to see these things come down inside in the case of the two the north and south uh, towers there of the world trade center you know come down within a couple of hours as a result of the structural damage weakening that was done when these aircraft hit them and now number seven the world trade center which is which is 47 stories tall it's our understanding that that building had been evacuated when the collapse occurred this was known as building seven of the world trade center and that is fresh video you're looking at of that coming down you know again uh, they were able to get everybody out of that building before it collapsed so <clears throat> i don't know whether it was whether it was uh, accomplished by uh, demolition experts or whether it just happened as a consequence of what occurred earlier today. Understanding that that building had been evacuated when the collapse occurred. This was known as Building 7 of the World Trade Center and that is fresh video you're looking at of that. When the collapse occurred. This was known as Building 7 of the World Trade Center and that is fresh video you're looking at. For Ann Wilson, yesterday's attacks brought back horrible memories from her childhood. I grew up in England. I was in the Blitz during the war and when I saw the devastation I'm certainly number seven that just went down as we were live on the air earlier on with MSNBC was cleared out most people they said earlier that they were just waiting for that building to go down so they were expecting this to happen not only that it's still an awesome sight when this happens spoke of inhuman attacks the British Prime Minister Tony Blair spoke of a battle between the democratic world and terrorism when I was directing traffic at, uh, at the intersection of Northmore and Greenwich, we, uh, there was a, a, a Lieutenant John Wolf, South Manhattan South Task Force uh, commander there. And uh, he went over to a civil engineer and said, when number seven World Trade Center goes, are we going to be safe here? We're six or seven blocks away. And the civil engineer looked and said, I think so. The, 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 so, so we're talking about 10 blocks. When the, when the, when the towers came down, yeah. they, like I say, they basically crumbled into themselves. Yeah. Did they knock over any other structures, smaller structures, brownstone stores? That I can, well, well, I can tell you from having been there afterwards, uh, not as much as you would have thought. One of the things that uh, I think is, is uh, awfully hard, give me a sense, just your, your best guess of how many people we're in that area where you were. were are we talking hundreds of people? Uh, these are rescue workers, firefighters, police officers, and the rest. Several thousand. Several thousand people. By the time we left, several thousand people were there helping. And when you got there at 2 o'clock in the morning, 
and I realized the last thing you were doing when you arrived at 2 o'clock in the morning was uh, counting the number of people around you. Are the, uh, as he put it, quote, a, a part of a very heavy focus by the FBI uh, being looked at as suspect white shirt, they both had black hair, uh, as he described them, they weren't really light complected. Uh, evidently, uh, but what happened was uh, they uh, did impound the car. Uh, uh, they took photos of it. It was impounded uh, overnight by the state police and taken to the main state police crime lab in Augusta, where it was being held for the FBI. Uh, now, uh, Chief Chitwood did say, as uh, gave you the, some sort of description, he said that you can be a lot more careful about who you let on a plane. You can be a lot more careful about what kind of blades are allowed. You can be a lot more intelligent about using spies. We know that. We've said it overnight. We know what needs to be done. What was lacking was the will to do it politically, because you didn't need to do it. Now you do. The collapse of Seven World Trade Center, the building they were so worried about injuring rescue workers, has freed up um, rescue workers to now go into the area, and they are moving in in groups of 20 and 50 as their teams are designated. Um, so the, the principal danger, the principal danger to the rescue and recovery the, teams has been eliminated. The so biggest danger has literally removed itself. Right. Let's now go live to New York City where our correspondent Jane Stanley now joins me. Jane, we can see behind you those plumes of smoke yes. still rising from the World Trade Center. What's left of it? It never seemed real that something like this could develop and they could watch it happening on their television screens as, as is what happened today. Well, Jane Stanley, thanks for joining us live from South Manhattan. You can see in the background behind Jane there what's left of the World Trade Center, the smoke, the dust, the rubble. Burning. Jane, let's talk about the human side. You live in New York with our BBC colleagues. You're one of, what, 10 or 11 million people. What about the people around you you've seen? The 47-story Salomon Brothers building, situated very close to the World Trade Center, has also just collapsed. And part of the defense... Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago, I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. And indeed it has. Apparently that's only a few hundred yards away from where the World Trade Center towers were. And it seems that this was not a result of a new attack. It was because the uh, building had been weakened uh, during uh, this morning's attacks. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. There's almost a sense downtown in uh, New York behind me, down by the World Trade Centers, of uh, just an area completely closed off as the rescue workers try to do their job. But this isn't the first building that um, has suffered as a result. We know that part of the Marriott Hotel next to the World Trade Center also collapsed as a result of this huge amount of falling debris from 110 floors of two, the two twin towers of the World Trade Center. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash, and we know that behind that there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline, a symbol of the financial prosperity of this city, but uh, completely disappeared now and New York is still unable to take on board what has happened to them today. Presumably there were very few people in the Salomon building when it collapsed. I mean there were I suppose fears of possible further collapses around the area. That's what you would hope because this whole downtown area behind me has been completely sealed. Off. Talking yet about revenge and what the government should do to counter this uh, threat or are they numbed still? I think people are still numb and I don't think people are talking about revenge in that way at all yet. I think people are, are still too traumatized. They, we don't know how many people have been killed. We, we, we can't even put a figure, I think, when you talk to people on, on, they don't even say how many people might have been killed and injured and I think that feeling idea of the of the devastation people don't really know what to say or what to think i think they feel the bubble of their security as being in america